Thank you for stopping by my channel. And today I'm working on this 1969 Cadillac Coupe de Ville with original factory paint. This customer wanted these dents out of the car, made the car look awful. You know, lots of people are waking up to the idea of not going to a body shop for dent repair because there's always a chance it could be removed without harming the original paint. Many people think paintless dent repair is for new cars because they feel the older paint will crack. And this is not true. Original paint is excellent to work with, and it just depends on the severity of the damage. That's why it's always worth the search to find a technician to check out your damage, and you may avoid the repaint. Now, I'm a specialist in working on older cars. I really, really trained for it and came up with my own method to do this. And it's mainly slapping from the top side and not always pushing from underneath. I like saving these old classics. It's a lot of real estate to repaint. It's totally worth it for someone to seek out a paintless dent repair technician that can save this classic and others from unnecessary repainting because when you have factory paint, and this is factory paint. Now how do I know that? I'll show you. Let's look deep into the reflection in the distance and then move very slowly and the edges will not waver in a factory panel you can literally see the pole across the street see that that's factory panel when they repaint it they can't get that much material on such a large sheet without a little bit of chatter they just never can that's a factory panel so if i can fix this dent here, how much is that worth? It is great value because the car will be back to original. And these little scratches don't mean much compared to keeping the original paint. Learning this in paintless dent repair is gold. You'll find work everywhere and anywhere. But there's a certain method and technique you must learn. <laughs> That's a lot of real estate to lift. That's beautiful factory paint on this Cadillac. Oh my goodness, those hinges have to work so well. Sunday driver, no doubt. <laughs> Bring me back seat. Thinking about coming up from the inside, but the wheel well is too far inside the lip of the fender. Really can't peel it back. Now there's that opening there to come in from the bottom. But that would be the mistake, trying to slide a rod through that little opening to take out a big dent like this. Not a good idea. And what's going on is I did not see the point of impact right here. The reflection and everything, it just obscures it and I missed it. It's a vertical impact mark. I don't know how hard it was hit, but I couldn't believe the strength of what this area entailed and how busy it was inside there. You know, with these cars, there's no glue pulling. You'll pull the paint right off and you have to get creative. This turned out to be the best setup ever, and I mean ever. Look how simple this is. This helped a ton getting all the big pushes done. After I got a lot of it moved, it was time now to do the detailing. You don't want to use your wrists and a lot of uh, your body uh, to push dents out because it's tough on your body, it really is. So in this case here, and this is again what I teach in my course, is that you have sockets that you weld to the end of the rod, and then that way you can use a sliding T-handle right there. And I just slide pipes onto it to give me that amazing leverage you need, especially working on an old car like this with some thick metal. And this new method I have is not new to the auto body technician who's been doing this for years using a slapper. But in, in this type of work, you have to be super accurate 
and you have to have the power to move the metal. And this I have found is the most effective way I can move metal without doing so many hits. You know, a lot of this is, is some wide um, movement of waves. And since I'm hitting it in a way that shocks it, it sends the waves so well versus hitting everything a hundred times to get it to move, making dimples you have to fix later. And in training, I teach you how to read the reflection, just as I'm doing here. You, know, you see a lot of people using lights and boards and lines and all of that. And in the end, at some point, you've got to pull away those instruments and show the customer what I call the natural reflection. Well, I've, I've learned to actually fix the dent just using the natural reflection and not using any kind of lights. It's very, very accurate. And if you combine slapping like this, unbelievable. The accuracy and the power you'll have, and you won't dimple up areas to redo again. Because as you know, if you're studying paintless dent repair, it's incredibly tedious. And it can be very frustrating if you're going over an area again and again and again and spinning in circles. If you find yourself making more work for yourself and seeing more dimpling, then you've been trained in a way to promote that and cause that. And that may work on smaller dents but when you try to scale up to these larger ones, or if you're working in an environment where you cannot use glue pulling, you have to rely on your skills of actually pushing the dent out. But in this case here, I'll teach you the skills of slapping where you move the waves into the lows, and lots of times you don't even have to push the low out because the wave lifted it out. And you might say, I do that now. I knock down the crowns with my round hammer. Well, a round hammer is round, and it's going to disperse the energy in all directions. The real secret is the way, if you look here, if you see how I'm slapping, I'm tilting the hammer. That means I'm working both or different sides of the wave, all kinds of sides of the waves, and I'm making sure that I'm sending that wave. If you're hitting it with a round hammer, you're literally just sending it all over the place, kind of like whack-a-mole. At some point, you, it's really, really almost impossible to lay it down perfect because you made all these waves into very small waves. And what I'm doing with this slapper is I'm hitting it like a whip. And that vibration is sending the wave where I want to. In this case, I'm going downwards now. But look where I'm standing. I don't have to jump to the other side because that area is doing it all. And it's doing it all without making a mark. That's the goal. You don't want to fall into the trap. And this is what I used to do, furiously tapping and tapping and tapping, messing with my board or, or light reflector, and then more tapping. This is creating just a lot of unnecessary dimples that you have to fix later. And you don't want work to fix later. So I developed a whole way of doing this, not just with this way of hitting, but it's also the way you look at the damage and analyze each and every low. All right, back to the repair. I had to do this really, really tough one at the very front near the nose of the fender. Look at the depth of that. So I bent my 24 heavy dent dial quite a bit to get in there. And that's what you want is a lot of power to move this old metal. Because if you come up too narrow and too small of a tool that pimples it up, this will look horrible. And you can't glass damage by pimpling it up. Next on the list is this dent right here on this Coupe de Ville. So we're gonna be working inside the big trunk and starting to take it apart. Okay, I rolled the carpet back, got that delicate piece of cardboard out of the way, and now this is what I gotta work with. I gotta get tooling down inside there. Here I wedged this uh, piece of trim, chrome trim, out a little bit, just so I could see what I was doing, because I certainly wasn't gonna remove it completely. Those would be hard to put back on. It's nice that it got nice and hot because I can get all these pieces hot. I don't have to worry about some sticker. 
The best part of working on old paint, especially original paint, is it does hold up to this kind of pushing. Look at this. And I know how to push it out in a way where it's not going to crack the paint. And that's what I teach in my course. You want to learn methods that don't crack the paint. And that means raw, sharp, very, uh, very blunt, uh, but just raw steel tools. It's pretty much par for the course when you're moving this kind of metal. You know, it's hard to get all the way up to the edge with a big old powerful push. But I got close because, you know, you have to kick the other side. So you really don't want to get that edge out until you're ready to kick the other side. But yeah, this is going to be a fat crease to be working on. Yikes. And I guess it must have been the way I was initially trained or shown how to do this. I would take tools that would destroy a dent like this into a million pushes that I had to cross-check and cross-check and cross-check. And it, with this type of repair, you can't uh, work on it from multiple angles. That's what makes it difficult, is I had to have one hand inside and me on the other side reading the reflection. And the method I teach is called wide directional pushing and slapping. And it's a method I came up with after being very frustrated with paintless dent repair on so many dents. And at the same time, we were in working, asked to work on older cars and I was always telling people, no, I've actually developed a method that works on not only brand new cars, but cars back into the 1930s because these cars need dents removed as well. And I've taken this process to some of the nicest cars in the world because you cannot pimple up dents and sand the clear coat on these cars. And I take this same process to the Dent Olympics every year. So it works on new, old, it doesn't matter. You want to learn something that's not going to damage the paint and you want to learn a process that you can work on any car. Now it may look like I'm randomly just slamming this metal down with this slapper tapper, but I'm not. I'm reading the reflection just right. And that's what you have to learn is how to read the reflection. And that's what I teach in the course and how to move the metal in setups that don't bring it up with these little, little pushes that you have to spend so many hours trying to fix. It takes time. But there is a way to position your pushes to where you can lift larger sections and you can blend your pushes together. And why is this so important? Because you may have seen videos where people are pushing dents out in small increments and creating so many high spots that it's almost impossible to make it go away without taking sandpaper to the clear coat. You can't do that on these old cars. There's a way to lift dents out so smooth that even old paint like this won't crack. Getting there. Okay, all done with this gorgeous Cadillac. You know, it took, some, took a while to get all these dents out, but uh, I love saving these cars from the body shop, especially one with all original paint like this. One at the front nose, that's all gone. Way better than that ugly 
dent that devalued this car quite a bit. Yeah, you see a dent like that, then you think repaint. But uh, not if you know paintless dent repair technicians that can work on older classics like this one and save it from the body shop. Well, thanks for watching. This is Sal from Dent Experts restoring this beautiful 1969 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Saving it from the body shop because you don't paint cars like this.